at. Make sure that I have that. Okay. Yep. Uh, all right. We are recording. So let me go ahead and let's let's jump to this uh, this screen. Where is it? Here. This one. Uh, wrong tab. Oh, and I need to bring up the chat so I can see if there are any questions that are being typed there. Okay. Um, so, oh, and let's go to student view. So this is what it should look like on your end. Um, but what you should have uh, is the academic integrity verification quiz um, that you should have completed. Uh, so hopefully you have, if, if you haven't, complete that as soon as possible. And then the next thing is the uh, mini project, but that isn't due until um, this Sunday. So. Um, so those are the only things that were on web campus, everything else uh, up to this point, up to this point, everything else will, will have been found on uh, Pearson on the MyMathLab. And those, those assignments, none of those were due yet. They should be the, the first uh, due date for those will be uh, Sunday, January 31st. So, and I, like I said, there are, going, there are some of those uh, that are currently assigned there that I need to uh, extend the due date for because those are those due dates are not correct at the moment. Um, so hopefully that clears up any of those questions. Any other any other questions up to this point? I actually have a question about my math lab. Uh, yes. So uh, we need to make an account as soon as possible, right? That is correct. And uh, do we need like an, a solar number or something and all like a solar ID or something to like in order to make the account or? Um, no, so um, usually for these for, well, um, I'd say most of the time for these Pearson accounts you do, uh, but because we are syncing this with Web Campus, you're going to, when you click on the, uh, you're going to log in through Web Campus here on the My Lab and Mastering uh, tab here. And you're going to sign in here or create your account here and it will automatically put in the code for you. Oh, um, okay. Yeah, so usually there is a code, but because we're syncing those, um, if you do it through this tab, well, you'll have to do it through this tab and it will put in the code for you, so. Um, okay, and uh, we still need to like pay for the account, right? We still need to pay for like a subscription? Uh, that is correct. Unless you have uh, purchased a new book from the bookstore, usually those come with an account included. Uh, but if you've not purchased a new book, if it's a used book, or if you've not purchased a book at all, then you'll have to purchase an account. Yes. Okay. Okay. Um, good. Any other, any other questions? These are good questions. I'm still a little bit um, concerned because it seems like it's just a couple of days and we have to have all these things done, like, because there were several like reading checks and I've only read the first 1A, that's all I've read so far. And what uh, will we so have to read? What, what, will be, what will be due is uh, any of the assignments associated with things we finished in lecture. So right now we've finished 1A, we're on, uh, let me double check here, we're on 1C. Um, so we we should finish one C today and hopefully one D. So let's let's assume for now because we haven't finished lecture yet. But let's assume we finish those three sections, then the reading checks, and the homework. Those two things will be due for one A, one C, and one D. So that will be six. Uh, it will look like six assignments, but again, the reading checks are just two uh, question quizzes to make sure that you've read the read through those sections. Everything else will be uh, moved to the. Um, well, to further, I, I haven't, uh, I messed up on the due dates for those. So I need to go through and fix those. Um, so, uh, and that is if we finish uh, completely 1C and 1D. Uh, I know for sure we'll finish 1C. I don't know about 1D. I think we will, but if not, then that will, then those two assignments will be moved to uh, next weekend as well. So um, for this weekend on, on Pearson, there will only be four to six assignments and half of those will be the two question reading checks. So, um, and, and I believe, because I messed up on, on, uh, on those 
uh, due dates, there's a lot more assigned for being due this week if you log in right now, but that's not what will actually be due. So um, any other questions or comments? Okay. Um, again, I do know there's a little bit of a delay, so I'll keep my eye on chat. Uh, but if I don't see or hear any more questions, we'll go ahead and uh, begin with the with the lecture. So let's go to our digital paper here. And let me adjust this. Okay, uh, so we're in section 1c. which is on the uh, sets and Venn diagrams. And again, this seems like a little bit of a, of a tangent away from uh, logic, but we'll be using the Venn diagrams uh, to analyze arguments. So it, it will connect back uh, by the end of this section. Uh, so last class, we define sets, which again, um, we're also using the word category for those. So we use the word category and set interchangeably. Those those uh, mean the same thing in this in this course. Um, and uh, we had three set relations. So let's remind ourselves of those. So the three set relations we had. The first one was the subset relation which in terms of a Venn diagram, we can represent as a circle inside of a circle. The second one was the disjoint sets, which we uh, represent as two circles that do not overlap. And then the third one was the overlapping sets, which are two uh, circles that intersect here. Uh, so those were the three set relations. Again, those are going to be um, key in doing our analysis. And then we also talked about uh, sets of real numbers as well. Or sets of numbers, I guess, which, which was the uh, real numbers and their subsets. Okay, so today we're going to uh, connect what we're doing with the Venn diagrams uh, with our arguments. And we're going to do that by looking at what we call uh, categorical propositions. So let's define it first, a categorical proposition or uh, categorical propositions. are propositions that uh, claim a particular relationship uh -huh. sorry waiting for my program here to catch up there we go claim a particular relationship between two sets or categories. Particular relation or relationship between two, let's, let's put uh, categories first or sets, remember that we're using those two words interchangeably, categories and sets. So that's what a categorical proposition is or what, what categorical propositions are. There are four uh, standard categorical propositions. Now, um, these categorical propositions will actually be uh, one of these three set relations. You notice we have three set relations. So one of these is actually going to appear twice, uh, but you'll see that when we when we get into the 
standard form for these. Um, so we have four standard categorical propositions that we can see. And any kind of categorical proposition can be rewritten in a standard form. So uh, if, it is, if it is not written in this way, it can be uh, restated in English to uh, be in this form. So we're going to have uh, two categories, S and P, B categories, or sets. And the first one that we have is all S R P. Now, um, again, these these uh, categorical propositions S and P are categories or sets, um, and these categorical propositions can be true or can be false. So we could have uh, uh, looking at some of the examples we had in last class. We could have S be the set of uh, cats like lions, panthers, tigers, so on. P be the set of uh, mammals. And then the categorical statement, all cats are mammals, would be true. Whereas we could have them be something completely different. Um, like take, for example, uh, we could have S be the set of all types of metals and P be the set of all types of wood all metals are wood would be a false categorical statement. So it depends on which sets you are looking at, S and P, or which categories you're looking at. Um, but one of these, at least one of these four uh, statements will be true. So let's list out the other, the other three. So two is no S, R, P, three, is some s rp and four is some s are not p and so these four we call this the standard form this is the standard form for these categorical propositions and we call it the standard form uh because it is the easiest to recognize and uh, any kind of categorical proposition can be reformulated to be in, uh, in one of these uh, sentences, in the form of one of these sentences. Okay, uh, so let's look at the Venn diagrams for these. What are the associated Venn diagrams that we get with these categorical propositions? Because again, we're looking at uh, a relationship, let's go back, a relationship between two categories or two sets. So uh, we can reformulate these in terms of our, if I scroll up, in terms of our three set relations. So uh, let's look at the Venn diagrams for those. Uh, so let's call these the associated Venn diagrams. Okay, so for the first statement, all S R P, uh, we can analyze this, uh, but I don't wanna spend too much time worrying about that. Um, so I'll leave the, uh, I'll leave this to you to verify on your uh, personal study, but what we end up with here is a subset relation where uh, S here is the subset of the set P. Okay, for the second one, well, let's, so I guess before, before I do the second one, that, um, just as a note how to analyze this, we're saying all S are P, so notice if something is a, a member of the set S, it must be a member of the set P, and that is exactly what we defined as our subset relation. So you can get those 
uh, you can get these Venn diagrams, these relations from the statement. Uh, some of them are more obvious than others. Some of them take a little more thought. Uh, but uh, again, I'll leave the details to your personal studies. Uh, no SRP. We end up here with a disjoint, whoop, with a disjoint relationship uh, between these two sets. So the Venn diagram here, we will have two disjoint sets. So this one will be say S and this one will be say P. So we get a disjoint relationship. So here's S, here is P. All right. Now with uh, three and four, these are actually going to be our overlapping. And there is a little bit of some distinction between these, but we will uh, look at what that distinction is. So some SRP, this is going to be an overlapping relationship. Between these two sets. So here we will have S and P as overlapping sets. So here is S, here is P. And same thing with four, this will be overlapping. Uh, some S are not P. Again, we'll have this overlapping relationship. Let me see if I can. Yeah, there we go. <laughs> Save some time on on drawing that. Um, now the distinction between these last two, some SRP and some S are not P, uh, what we're saying with some SRP, we're saying that there is something here, uh, some element that is both a member of S and a member of P. So we're saying there is something here. Whereas here, when we're saying some S are not P, we're saying that there is an element of S, a member of S, that is not a member of P. So we're saying that there is something here. Okay. So these are the associated Venn diagrams. Let me see if I can zoom out of that for you guys to get a good Good look at that. So these are going to be uh, exactly what we need in the next section to analyze our arguments. So these, uh, the categorical propositions and their associated Venn diagrams, this uh, page in particular, what is being shown on the screen is going to be very, uh, very important in the next section. So this I would become uh, f very familiar with. And we'll look at some, some examples um, in looking at a couple of sets and uh, coming up with what, uh, what categorical proposition is true with those. But uh, are there, before we look at those examples, are there any questions on, uh, on these categorical propositions or their associated Venn diagrams? Okay, so let's look at some examples then. Uh, so what we're going to do uh, for this first, well, for these for these examples, uh, I'm going to have the going to have the same directions. So let's write out the directions first. So with these examples, let's um, write a true categorical proposition for the uh, given
categories. And let's uh, draw the associated Venn diagram. Now, when we're uh, looking at something like this, uh, when we want to write a, a true categorical proposition, um, I believe for most of these, there's going to be uh, possibly two correct answers, um, but I'm just we're just looking for one. Uh, first example, let's look at uh, poets. and plumbers. So our two cate categories here, our two sets are uh, poets is the first one, plumbers is the second one. All right, uh, when we're looking for a true categorical proposition, what we're going to do, what I would do is start with the first one that we have. So we have four of these possibilities, all SRP, no SRP, some SRP and some SR not P. I would start with the first one and uh, look at, let's look at the uh, plugging in poets and plumbers for S and P and see if the statement is true. So let's uh, plug that in. What the statement we get then is all poets are plumbers. Is that a true statement or a false statement? I would say it's false. Good, I would say it's false as well. Uh, what if we switch plumbers and poets? So we get all plumbers are poets. Is that true or false? I would think that if either one would be false. Yep, good. So plumbers, some plumbers could be poets, but I don't believe all of them could be. Right, so the first categorical proposition is does not work for these two sets. Let's look at the second one. All poet, uh, sorry, no poets are plumbers. I don't agree with that either. Someone yep. could be a poet and need to work as a plumber to make a living. Good, so let's switch the two. No plumbers are poets. It'd still be this, still be false. Right, and so it is not uh, two. What about three? Some poets are plumbers. I think that could be true. And there is our true one. So in this case, with the poets and plumbers, we get the third categorical proposition. So we get some poets are plumbers. So that is our categorical proposition. And the associated Venn diagram we get then with this, let me, hold on, let me fix that. There we go. According to our uh, notes, this should be overlapping. One of these sets then are poets and the other set here are plumbers. Okay, so this is our, uh, so with these two sets, our categorical proposition, one categorical proposition that is true is some poets are plumbers. And the associated Venn diagram we get from that is given here. Okay, so let's look at a few more examples. Again, those uh, same directions, write a true categorical proposition for the given categories and then draw the associated Venn diagram. So we're going to do the same thing with these other two categories. So let's look at, so this is our second one. Let's look at shirts and clothing. And I'm going to leave some room because uh, I want you guys to try uh, these next two examples on your own and then we'll go over it as a class. So uh, shirts and clothing. And then the third example uh, is going to be uh, food. As soon as my 
program catches up with me, food and furniture. Okay, so try these out on your own. See if you can get the categorical prop, uh, one true categorical proposition and then draw the associated Venn diagram. And uh, while you guys are doing that, if you can um, type in the chat here uh, so that I can uh, mark my attendance for you guys. I, I don't think I did that last class, but we'll, we'll uh, count this class, so uh, thank you. Okay, uh, so go ahead and take a minute or two and try these out and then we will go over them as a class. Um, also, uh, one thing I think that would make this easier, um, I believe that there is that you guys can uh, put an interaction. If you can just put a thumbs up when you are finished, uh, that way I can see where we are as a class. Okay, I don't know if those stay. Looks like those don't stay for very long. But that's all right. Uh, yes, uh, go ahead and try the... Um, for number two, is it all SRP? Uh, yes, and be, which... It would be... Yes, sir. Uh, go ahead. All so what what uh, what category takes the place of S? I have here the first one. Good. All shirts. Yeah. Our clothing. Yes, sir. That is correct. That is a true categorical proposition. Okay. And so what we get with this one, remember with the Um, with the all SRP categorical proposition that that is a subset. So those are subsets, yes. Good, okay. So we have, in this case, the subset would be shirts and the other set would be clothing. So there is our associated Venn diagram. All right. Uh, what about number three? Okay, we have one in the chat. No SRP. Which? Uh, well, again, which which one is S? Which one is P? S is uh, food, and P is furniture. Good. So in this case, we get. No food. Is furniture. 
And so our associated Venn diagram with this would be disjoint sets. Okay, so for this set, we have food. And this one, we have furniture. Excellent. Uh, so any questions on these examples or on the uh, categorical propositions? So again, the categorical propositions that is, and their associated Venn diagrams, that is going to be key for us in the next section when we are evaluating, um, analyzing in more detail arguments. So these will come back, uh, but for now we're going to take another slight detour and we're going to look at, um, given a study or a survey, how do we represent the results of that in a Venn diagram? And if we have the Venn diagram representing the results of a study or survey, uh, how can we get information from that Venn diagram on the study or survey? So um, let's begin with that. Uh, and the way that we're going to uh, create a Venn diagram is using a two-way table. So let's define that first, and then we'll look at an example. Uh, a two-way table is used to show the results of a study or survey having two variables. And uh, when we say two variables, what we're thinking of this as, uh, we want to think of this as uh, these, let's think of it as a survey. No, let's go with the study first. Um, so let's say this was uh, a study looking at medicine. Then the two variables means there's going to be two questions we would ask the participant. Um, and if we were doing say a medical one, uh, an example of that would be one question uh, would be, did you receive the placebo or the actual medicine? And then the second uh, question, so the second variable would be, did you develop symptoms or did you develop no symptoms? So uh, you can think of the variables as the different, as the different questions. And we're going to have uh, generally uh, two answer questions. So either yes, no, or something similar to that. And um, we're going to actually use the two-way table as a stepping stone to create a Venn diagram. So that's how we're going to use that. So let's look at an example of a uh, study in this case. And uh, create a two-way table and then the Venn diagram from the information. All right, so we have an average of many different studies of handedness indicate that in a random sampling of adults Ten percent of men are left handed, and fifteen percent of women are left handed. All right, 
So let's suppose we have a sample. of, uh, let's say, 350 men and 360 women. OK, so here is a study that was done on handedness. Are you left-handed or right-handed? And uh, again, we had a second question. Are you a man or a woman? And these were the results we got. So what we want to do, uh, two things here, we want to make a two-way table. To display the results. And a Venn diagram as well to display the, the uh, results of the study. So again, we're going to use the two-way table as a stepping stone uh, to make our Venn diagram. All right, so we want to make our two-way table. We know that there's going to be two variables. So the first thing that we need to do, the first thing that is going to be necessary for us to do is identify the variables. Uh, so let me go to a uh, a fresh page here. All right. And so what are the two what are the two variables that we are looking at in the study? What were the two questions that we would have asked the participants? Are you a man or a woman? Good. So are you a man or a woman? And I already see a solution there in chat, good. What What is the other one? It's mainly, are you left or right-handed? Are you left or right-handed, handedness, good. So the first variable is male or female, man or woman. Um, I guess we should write it the same as it is in the study, man or woman. Second variable, What's your handedness, left or right? Now there could be other answers to this. Um, obviously they're ambidextrous individuals, even just with our second variable. Um, but just to make life easy on ourselves so we can actually create the Venn diagram, uh, we're just going to stick with uh, two answer questions. Um, so even if there might be more answers than what we have, again, just to make life easy on ourselves to make this uh, simple and uh, doable in terms of the Venn diagram. We're going to keep it with uh, two answer questions. OK, so to create the two-way table, this one of these is going to be the rows. And one of these are going to be the columns of the table. So when we're setting up the table here, we will have um, so let's see, what do I have as the rows? We have man, or I guess we should say men since we have multiple men, women. And I like to put in a third one called total. Uh, the book does not, but I like to include it because that is a nice way to uh, verify that your table is correct. And then the columns we have left-handed, we have right-handed, and again, I'm going to include total here. And I should probably use the line tool, but that's all right, this is gonna be a little messy. So here is our two-way table. So we have uh, one variable as the column, one variable as the row, and now we just have to fill out the information. So let's go back to our information here. Uh, so let's see, we have 10% of men are left-handed. 
We'll come back to that in a moment. 15% of women are left-handed. We'll come back to that. Uh, we have 350 men in the sample. So if we go here, men for total, we have 350. And for women, let's go back to our results, 360 women. So for total number of women, we have 360. All right. Now, to get uh, the 10%, we had 10% of men are left-handed. So here we have 10%. Uh, now this, we haven't talked about percents yet. Um, <laughs> there will actually be a section on percents, but uh, just as a quick reminder, uh, if we want 10% of 350, we change the percent into its decimal form. So that would be 0 0.1. In this case, we move the decimal over two places and we multiply that to the total number, 350. And so you'd, you'd go to your calculator. Um, I would recommend you guys have your uh, four function calculator ready to go so that you can uh, do this along. Uh, so you do 0 0.1 times 350 and you should get 35. Excellent. Okay. And I saw that in the chat. That is good. 35. All right. And let's go back to, well, I'm not going to switch back, but we had 15% uh, of women. So we have 15% of 360. So again, that's going to be 15% uh, of 360. To find that number, we take the 0 0.15. We move the decimal place over to uh, the, the decimal point two places, get the decimal form, and then times 360. And what do we get for that when we plug that into our calculator? So let's see, we have 0.15 times 360, we get 54. Okay, so this was the information that we had in the problem. Now we want to fill in the rest of the table. Any questions up to this point? No questions, okay. So uh, how do we find then, let's uh, pick on men for right now. Uh, how do we find the number of right-handed men that were in the study? I would just subtract the left-handed men from the 350. That's exactly right. Yep, we take the 350 minus the 35. Okay, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and do that on the calculator here. I'm not going to switch windows, uh, but hopefully you get you have that. So what do we get? I uh, should get 315. Okay, and then we do the same thing here to get the total number of right-handed women. We take the 360 minus the 54. And what do we get for that? 360. Three, 306. 306. I think that is right. Yes. And my computer is having issues. There we go. Okay. 306. Okay. Uh, now we also want to um, total these down. Uh, so we get the total number of participants. So we would have the uh, 350 plus 360. 
So we have 710 total participants. If we add the number of left-handed, uh, 35 plus 54, we get 89 total left-handed individuals. And then the 315 plus the 306, and we get 621 right-handed individuals. So that was adding these down to get the total on the bottom. Now to verify, we're going to look at 89 plus the 620 should give us the 710. And if we have our numbers correct, which we do, then that will be verified. So again, the book doesn't put in the total um, in the rows or the columns, but I think that it, it, it helps. So this is our two-way table. Okay. So two-way table, again, we uh, first have to identify what are the two variables. We put the answers to one variable as the rows, the answer to the other variable as the columns. Um, if you choose not to include the total, uh, that's fine. I won't mark any points off for that. Um, but I would, I like to put it in there uh, to verify solutions. All right, so now we want to uh, use this information, use this two-way table. Uh, that's a good question. Does it matter which variable we use for the rows and columns? No. Um, it will just change the where the numbers are. It won't change the information. So you could have put uh, left and right uh, as the columns and then men and women as the as the rows and it would be perfectly, perfectly fine. Or I think I said that backwards. Yeah, you can switch those, yeah. Okay, so um, to get our Venn diagram now, what we're going to do is we're going to pick a solution from each one of the variables. So we look at the first variable. We have two solutions, man or woman. I'm just gonna pick the first one. So I'm gonna pick man. Second variable is left-handed or right-handed. I'm gonna pick just the first one. So that's left-handed. Uh, so notice for this one, you could have a possible um, four, you could have four possible Venn diagrams. Each, again, each one of them will be equivalent. It's just going to look different. Um, so you need to pick again just one of the one of the answers for the first variable, one of the answers for the second variable. So when we create our Venn diagram, then let me scroll down so I have some more room here. We're going to do overlapping sets. One of the sets. I always try to get these even, but it never works out. All right, one of these sets is going to be the first answer. So the first answer was min. And then the second one is going to be the second answer. So that's left-handed. Okay, so now we wanna fill out uh, the numbers for the Venn diagram. So if we look at, uh, we have four parts, four pieces of this Venn diagram. We have where these two intersect. We have this part of that set uh, of the left set. We have this part of the right set. And we have this part outside of both sets. So let's focus on this part here. Let me, sorry, let me erase those. Uh, I just want to emphasize where those are at. Let's start with the middle here. So if, if somebody is in these two sets, is in these two circles, then what uh, type of individual do we have here according to our survey? Ambidextrous people? Not quite. That would be if we had uh, one of these, uh, instead of men, was uh, right-handed. Oh, I was reading it wrong. Oh, that's all right. Right-handed. Right. I think I see the an uh, one of the answers in the chat. Men that are left-handed? Men that are left-handed is correct. Yep. So men that are left-handed, the number that we have there are 35. So that goes here. Okay. 
next. Let's do uh, this this part next, right here. So notice this is inside of the min circle, but is it inside or outside of the left-handed circle? Well, no. it's, sorry, go ahead. It's outside. It's outside. So instead of left-handed, these are? The right-handed. Right-handed. So these are right-handed men. So right-handed men, we have 315. We get that number from the table. OK, let's look at uh, this part. So this is inside of the left-handed circle, but outside of the min circle. So if you're outside of the min circle, you are? A woman, female, good. So this part are left-handed women. We have 54 of them from our table. And then the last part is right here. This is outside of the min circle, so it's women. And it's outside of the left-handed uh, left circle, so it's right-handed. So right-handed women from our table 306. So this is our uh, study. Uh, as a Venn diagram, the information presented as a Venn diagram. Now you'll notice the numbers that we used were these numbers right here. We didn't use any numbers from either total uh, column or row. That's why the book does not include those. Uh, but again, I like to include those uh, to kind of give, um, give an extra way to verify uh, that your numbers are correct. Now, I don't understand why uh, men would be a circle within the, the universe of women. That part doesn't make sense to me. Um, you say these are right-handed women, right? Uh, the, Professor, in the box here. Professor, so, in sorry. terms of her question, we can also switch it up like, we can put women, but then we, we're just going to change the numbers. Is that right? That's right. Um, yeah, I think that's what she's so, asking. Well, so the universe here, this, this universe are um, uh, people in the handedness study. That's what we're looking at as our, as our universe. So when, when we, um, let me scroll back. Well, no, I'm not going to scroll back up. Uh, so we have two options when we are making, uh, when we are making the Venn diagram. Let me see if I have enough room here on the side. Uh, we could have either min as our set, which is the one we chose in this case, or we could have women as the set. Now, uh, here I'm not drawing the universe. These, these would go inside of a, a box. Um, but the way that this works, if you're inside of the circle, you are a part of that set. So you are a man. Uh, if you're outside of that set, then you are a woman. Whereas here, it would be opposite. If you're inside, you're a woman. If you're outside, you would be a man. So we're taking, instead of, uh, the universe is not necessarily women, it's anyone in this study um, but we're putting all of the men inside of the circle and all of the women outside of the circle. Uh, but we could very well have, have chosen this. It would just switch our numbers. Um, does that clear things up or, uh, do I need, did I, uh, talk around? Yeah, the... but I kind of wonder why you didn't just use three circles. Um, so for this one, the, well, um, I'm sorry, I just don't get, no, this no, that's all right. It's, um, uh, laziness on mathematicians part. We, we, like we prefer to write as little as possible. And, um, if we just have, uh, three, uh, sorry, if we can get away with just making two sets, two circles, then we'll do it every single time. Uh, so this is the least number of, of circles of sets that we that we need. So we go with two instead of three, because um, we're lazy. We don't like to write a lot. That's that's one one reason. The other reason is um, adding a third circle would get things a little bit 
uh, more complicated, a little bit messier. And if so, you could you could uh, in theory you could add you could add another circle here that was women, but then mm. there would be nobody outside of these two of these two sets. Or at least for the purposes of this study, because again, we're looking at either a yes or no question or a, a two answer question. Does that? Yeah, it seems like like they want to make it as hard for the mind to wrap around as possible. <laughs> <laughs> I, I apologize for that. Um, the, the, I'm, diagram, I'm, the, 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 the table makes sense, but the diagram is it's a little confusing at first because I guess because I'm not used to it. Yeah, the diagram is a little bit odd. Um, as as far as I'm aware, at least in 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 my experience, most of the time when in previous math courses they have you just create a table instead of making the Venn diagram itself. Uh, but this class is a little bit odd, so we do like to uh, give other options. In, in this case, creating a Venn diagram as well. Um, uh, once you get used to it, once you do a couple of examples, it, once you get used to it, it's not as bad. But I, I guess, yeah, the, the initial bit can be, uh, can be confusing. Um, any other questions or comments here? OK. So the. Last part of this section is doing the opposite. So if we are given a Venn diagram representing the results of a study or survey, uh, how do we get information from that? So I'm going to get a, a fresh piece of paper here. And I'm going to give you a Venn diagram. And we're going to pull information from that. So let's. Oops. So let me get the Venn diagram down, if my computer will cooperate. There we go. So whoops. I'll draw this really quickly. All right, so here is our Venn diagram. Here we have three sets. So we would not be able to represent this in a two-way table because we have uh, three variables. We don't have two variables. This is going to represent people at a conference. Um, Okay, uh, people at a conference, this first set is going to be men. Uh, second set is going to be college degree, those that have a college degree. And the third one, individuals that are employed. So these are our three sets. Let's fill in the numbers. Uh, here we have three, here we'll have five, as soon as my computer catches up. Uh, 10 there, 7 there, 2, 8, 5, and 5. OK. So again, this is um, doing the opposite of what we did in the last example. So here we are given the results of a study in a Venn diagram. We want to get information from this uh, study using the Venn diagram. So let's look at a couple of questions we can ask. Uh, let me try and zoom out so we can still see the Venn diagram. Uh, so one question, uh, how many employed men at the conference uh, 
have a college degree. All right. Uh, before we get into answering this, I want to let's let's uh, backtrack a little bit and and analyze the Venn diagram in a little more detail. Um, so with the, uh, when we're looking at these Venn diagrams again, just to make life easy on ourselves, um, we're going to just look at uh, two answer questions. So here we have three sets. We have uh, men, college degree, and employed. So let's start with the first one. Uh, we have men. So any anything inside the set is going to be men. Then anything outside of the set should be what? If this was a two answer question, are you man or women? Woman. Good. The next set we have is college degree. So if you're inside the set, you have a college degree. If you're outside the set, then what? You don't have a degree? You don't have a degree. Good. And then the third one is employed. And so then outside of the set would be unemployed. OK. So when you are uh, asking, when you're looking at these questions that are asked, you're going to look at how many, uh, how many in which one of these sets are we looking at? So here we have employed, we have men, and we have college degree. So if we look at the set, if we were to uh, draw this out graphically, what we had, maybe I can do that quickly here. That's going to be the intersection of all three of those sets that were given. So we're looking at the number in this portion of the Venn diagram. So here we would have 10 men at the, at the uh, conference are employed and have a college degree. That's that middle section right there. Okay, uh, we can ask more complicated questions. How many men at the conference have a college degree? So notice here, we're just looking at men and college degree. So in this case, if we were to redraw the Venn diagram, here we have men, here we have college degree, we're looking at, at this part. Notice we have another set here that we are ignoring. So there's actually two numbers here. Five men have a college degree and are unemployed, and 10 men have a college degree and are employed. So it would be 5 plus 10 would be 15. Because we're ignoring this third set, which means for this one, we're looking at this number and this number. OK. Let's look at a little bit more of a complex question. How many uh, women at the conference are employed? OK, so here we're looking at two sets. We're looking at women and employed. So if we, would, if we were to draw those two sets, we'd have, well, we don't have women listed. We have men listed. Let me see if I can draw the box here. I'm running out of room. I apologize. I need to draw this smaller. And employed is this one. So employed, we're looking at inside of the circle. But for women, uh, what are we looking at? Is it inside of, well? Outside, outside. outside the circle. Outside, outside of the, men. the men's circle, but it could be an employed circle where it says two. Exactly right. Yes. We want outside of the men's circle, but inside of the employed circle. So notice we have two and we have eight. So that would be eight plus two mm -hmm. is 10. Okay. Okay. 
let me ask one more question. I don't think I'm going to be able to, well, maybe I can fit this on the page. Um, I'm going to have to, well, let me try this. <laughs> let me, let me see if I can resize. And I've just broken the whole thing. <laughs> okay. Um, oh, there we go. That'll work. All right. Next question. Let's look at uh, how many women are at the conference? So here, now we just have one set. Because we have three sets here, we're looking at a lot of regions. Um, to find the women, we're looking at what part of the Venn diagram? Inside or outside of which circle? Outside of the men's circle. Outside of the men's circle, good. So anything that's outside of the men's circle, so we'd have this five, that's outside. This eight is outside, this two is outside, and this five is outside. So we'd have five plus five plus two plus eight is 20. So we'd have, let's write that, two plus eight plus five plus five is 20 women at the conference. And I did see that in the chat, so that's very good. Uh, so that's pulling information from a Venn diagram. So here we have three sets. Um, the three variables that we're looking at, men or women, do you have a college degree or not? Are you employed or unemployed? And so we could ask questions about any number of combination of those. Um, you just have to be careful if it's one that shows directly in here, like men, then you're looking inside of that circle. If it's one that is not, then you're looking at outside of a, a, a circle. So if you're looking at uh, how many are unemployed? That's outside of the employed circle. If you're looking at how many women, that's outside of the men's circle. Uh, any questions on this example? Okay. So again, there's a very, very uh, high number of, of uh, questions we could ask involving that. Um, now uh, let's see, that is uh, section 1C. So 1C is now finished. And let's go ahead and we're just going to start section 1D. We're not going to get as far as I had hoped. That's all right. Um, so uh, let me just mention this now so I don't forget. Um, we finished 1A and 1C. So those, the homework for those two sections, the homework and the reading checks will be due this Sunday. So that's going to be four, it will be four of those uh, things on Pearson. Reading check for 1A, homework for 1A, reading check for uh, 1B, uh, sorry, 1C, reading uh, homework for 1C. So those four will be due on Pearson. The rest uh, I will be fixing the due dates for. Um, well, let's go ahead and start 1D. Um, um, yes, yes, uh, to that, that, that question. If you said here, uh, but it was in a private chat, that still does show up on my records, so that, that will show up. Uh, show up on the on the uh, chat when I check the, that. Uh. So one D, we are looking at analyzing arguments. All right. So here we're going to look at two types of arguments. Um, really, we're focusing on one, but there is a second type of argument that we do uh, that we do mention. 
So let's talk about, um, actually, with the amount of time left, I, I think we'll just stop here. Uh, I don't think we have enough time to fully define those and look at an example. So we'll, 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 we'll start uh, section 1D next class, actually. Um, we'll just stop there for now. So uh, I will fix the due dates on those. Um, so you should uh, only be focusing on those, those four things on Pearson. Um, let me see if I can say it without, without messing up. Uh, reading check for 1A, homework for 1A, reading check for 1C, homework for 1C. Um, uh, yes, so the mini project one, uh, because we didn't finish chapter one, I am going to have to uh, change the due date for that to be next weekend. Um, oh, uh, that's a good question. For the for the mini project, it is it is an overview of chapter one material. So I am I am going to have to remember to uh, change the due date. Um, but the mini project, uh, mini projects in general, um, you don't have an assigned group. You're supposed to do a submission on your own. You can work uh, with other individuals in the class or with the tutor, or ask me for help when you work on those. Um, but uh, you will be submitting the mini projects on your own. So um, you actually should be working on that. Uh, when you sit down to actually do the work, do that on, on your own. But you can get help uh, with, with other, other groups, uh, with other students to work on it as a group, just not submit it as a group. Um, yeah, so, so mini project one won't be due this Sunday since we didn't finish one, uh, 1D, since there is some uh, 1D material in that in that mini quiz, uh, mini project quiz. Um, all right, uh, let me. Uh, I have a question, Professor. Uh, yes, question. Um, you wanted us to send you like how we did the work. Is it only for those exams, or I know uh, it's for certain work. Yeah, it will. It will only be for the exams. Okay. Or um, or the other, the other thing, if you have a question on the homework um, mm -hmm. and you want me to take a look at it, then I want to see your work for that as well. But okay. otherwise, if you, if you are good with the homework, so, sorry, let me, let me rephrase that. So the only work that I should receive is for the exams, unless you're asking mm -hmm. help for a specific prob uh, problem on the homework. Then I would like to see your work on on that homework, but it won't be uh, it won't be due. It's just to uh, see where you are at in terms of that problem. Does does that okay. make sense? Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks okay. for clearing it up. Yep. Yeah. So so you're going to submit your work for all of the exams, but I don't need it for the homework unless you're asking a specific question on the homework. Then I I just need to see it to see where. Um, how far you got, where things went wrong. It might be a calculator error, it might be some other issue, um, but that's really hard to see if you don't have your, your work. Um, otherwise, you don't need to do any, anything. You don't need to turn in the, the, uh, the work for the homework, just finish it on, on Pearson. Um, any other questions before I, before I let you guys go? Okay, uh, thank you for coming. Uh, if you didn't type in here uh, when I asked, just make sure you do that before you leave. Um, have a wonderful weekend. I'll be fixing those due dates on both uh, Web Campus for the mini project and Pearson for the 1D and on. Um, uh, but we'll, we'll pick up next class with section 1D and continue from there. Okay, so thank you everyone. Um, and have a wonderful day and a wonderful weekend, unless I see you during office hours, in which case I will see you shortly. Thank you, Professor. Thank you. Thank you. Have a nice weekend. You as well.